Hey you guys, so this will probably be the most difficult video I've ever done. I will do a little official introduction. This is my Siberian Husky named Sasha. And about two or three weeks ago, she was diagnosed with bone cancer. And sadly, this will probably be her last winter. In fact, this may even be her last snowfall that she'll ever experience. And so today I was contemplating if I wanted to let her out or not, take her for a walk because she was in a little bit in pain, even after I gave her pain medications. But as soon as I grabbed the leash, she got really excited and I decided that who am I to deny her the right for a walk. So she is out here enjoying the snow as much as she loves it. Um, the vet has given her between one to six months to live, and my plan is to basically keep her alive as long as she wants to be alive. If she wants to live, she'll live. That's, that's really the only way to go about something like this. There's really no easy right or wrong answer to the situation that we're in. And sadly, the cancer has spread so far all the way to her lungs that the vet has said it's terminal. There is really no way that we can save her. Even with chemo, she'd only buy maybe two months, three months at most. And she would be si a little bit sick during that time. Fram, come here, you. Yeah, I know, you like going off on your own. You like your own adventures, no one attached. Sadly, you're on a leash, so you're going to have to obey those leash rules a little bit. But anyway, I decided that it's really not worth, worth my time or her suffering, really. I should have put more so of going through chemo if it's only going to buy her two more months. It, with this kind of situation, it's more about quality of life versus how long they live. So... I have really just buckled down and trying to give her the best, the best few months she can possibly get. Excuse me while we give her a little bit of privacy. But, um, yeah, Sasha has been my companion and really my best friend for about nine and a half years now. We were completely and utterly inseparable, so when the vet said she had cancer, it was... I'm not going to lie, I think everybody in that room was, besides the vet obviously, since she already knew, but was shell-shocked because I knew something was wrong a few days before we took her to the vet. And I had that inking feeling that one gets that something is seriously wrong, but I didn't want to believe it. I thought maybe I was just being paranoid. Because when it comes to her health, I'm quite, I'm a little more, oh God, don't go after that. Please don't go after that little bunny over there if you can see it. Please don't notice it. Yeah, no noticing the bunny. Bunny's not there. Bunny's not there. Good dog. Don't notice it. Be oblivious. Which, oblivious is her middle name, by the way. Describes her quite well. There you go. Lick it on that side, don't you? Bothers you if it's on the other side. But it really was a really shock. Because nine and a half years for a Siberian Husky really isn't that old. She's just entering her senior years. So maybe something like 50 or 60 year old person getting cancer, it's a little surprising still. And the fact that she still has so much life in her and she has a mental state of a one year old puppy probably, probably doesn't help much. Because she never aged after one year's mentally. But I loved her just the same and I always will. But on to her little story I guess because I don't know how much more of a chance I'll get be able to tell it with her in my presence. So I got Sasha when she was six weeks old, either between maybe eight weeks. It's been a long time. She's a puppy. Don't go too far away, you. Yeah, you'll, you'll be up to something. There's nothing like you chasing after a rabbit far away from me. That experience of holding you in. Ooh, I value that the most. But nine and a half years ago, anyway, we got her from an Amish town. Um, it's called Arthur, Illinois. And the, far, the Amish man there had four female puppies for sale. 
and now all three, three of the puppies stuck together. Her, on the other hand, she never stuck to the pack. She always kind of did her own thing, as you can see. She has a tendency of still doing that today. Going with the flow or, you know, listening to anybody. Not, not her strongest point, but the moment I saw her anyway, we kind of had an con instant connection, so to speak. There was just something about her that attracted me to her. And in fact, one of the children picked out another Siberian Husky puppy, and I specifically asked for her. I probably appear like a spoiled brat to him, <laughs> because, you know, it's just a puppy. How can you know at five seconds which one you want? But I did. Something about her draw me to her. And I was one of those people who, at 12 years old, did not do any research whatsoever on the breed that I was getting, and my parents, saved their souls, didn't do it either. So it was not a match made in heaven at first. I wish I could say it was, like I wish I say we got her instantaneously and she was perfect and yeah, if I said that I'd be lying. It was rough. She's notorious when she, we were trying to train her indoors when she was a puppy. She'd keep me up all night. She never shut up. Just kept talking. Come on. Yeah, you're getting a little too far there. Yeah, you. We're approaching a road and I'd rather you not be that far. But sadly, after two months trying to potty train her, keep in mind I'm a 12 year old. I was a 12 year old at the time. And my parents really knew nothing about potty training, as much as they like to say they did. They didn't. They had no idea what they were doing. She was put into an outside dog. Because my stepfather was tired of dealing with it. So, for a couple of years, she was an outside dog. And that did not stop me from visiting her outside all the time, let me tell you. I was more outside than inside. But one time, and, well, not one time, actually multiple times, you know, let me not try to make her sound better than she actually is to being a Houdini. She's notorious for getting loose and running havoc upon our town. Now, our neighbors loved it. There's nothing prettier than a Siberian Husky roaming free, their owner in whatever attire they happened to be in at the time, running full throttle at them. Quite the sight. And if you're a Siberian Husky owner, and if you ever ran after your Siberian Husky, I think you may know what I'm talking about. So, that took up quite a couple years, and one time, actually, she was gone for a whole month, and I really believed her to be lost. Come on. Yeah, I know, I'm slow. Yeah, I know. But, I believed her to be lost, and out of the blue, I got a call from nowhere saying that we had our, they had my dog, and the moment I saw her in the corner... About five blocks away, I knew it was her. And the moment she saw the car and she recognized that I was in there, she was jumping up and down for joy. That, that's one of those memories that don't exactly leave you. And they stay with you forever. And she was excited. And my stepfather was aggravated because he didn't like her. He thought she was a lot of trouble. <laughs> he was quite angry, actually. My mother told me later on. And he was just aggravated that we found her again. But I was happy, I'm telling you. I don't think, there's very few moments in my life where I have been happier than to have her come back to me. Which I have no idea what she's sniffing. What are you sniffing, you? Oh! <laughs> my hands are getting cold. But, um, that is probably the most notorious story of her, is getting loose. She eventually did go back into the house and she was successfully potty trained when she was about four or five. And that was back in my hometown. Now when I went to college I had quite the decision on me because most college students go to dorm rooms but I couldn't stand being away from her. And instead of going into a dorm room like most children, most college students do, I actually got my own apartment just to be with her, really. There were other reasons as well, but one of the primary reasons was so we wouldn't be separated. And I knew going this time before going in, apartments weren't the best, but these last three years we've made it work. A lot of exercise, a lot of stimulation indoors, and 
a lot of lovin's and she's pretty happy being where she is. So, yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what much more to say besides the fact that for nine and a half years we've been inseparable, two peas in a pod. And now for the first time in ever, we will be separated and there's really nothing I can do about it. And I'd be lying to you guys if I didn't say I don't feel guilty. I mean, for her to spread this far, I, she's had a habit for a while and I never noticed. I noticed some things being funky with her, but I just thought I was being paranoid. You know, that back of your mind saying, there can't be, there can't be anything wrong with your dog. It's just you. Well, it turned out not to be me and maybe if we caught it sooner, there's something we could have done. It could be done to save her, but now, now it's too late. And she's still walking away. You? Yeah, I know. You miss me. You might. You miss a bicycle. I used to ride with her on the bicycle on this track, but it's snowy, so bicycle no go. It's too freaking cold. And ironically, I hate the cold. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be out here right now. <laughs> Ironically, I have a snow dog and I hate the cold. And I hate the snow. But I love the dog. So, yeah. I think I'm going to let you guys go because my fingers, quite frankly, I cannot feel them. So, until later, I shall bid you adieu. And Sasha Sue, if we can get her to stop for two seconds. Come here. Yeah, come here. She'll bid you adieu well as well. Maybe for the first time, maybe for the last time. I don't know if I'll get to making videos of her anymore, but either way, this is her. And this is what is left and maybe the last video that she shall be in.